Yo, what's up guys? Mike here. Coming at you from the mushroom farm. I got a great video for you guys tonight. So tonight, we're gonna talk about grain spawn. Have you ever struggled trying to make really good grain spawn? Get your hydration right? Have you ever had bursted grains or bacterial problems or contaminated grain? Well, we're gonna cover all those things in tonight's video. And anyway, those of you just now tuning into this channel, my name's Mike, I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years full time. Here's just a few shots of some of my grows over the years, but I basically grow these mushrooms here on my farm and I sell them at farmer's markets and to high-end restaurants. We have over 260 videos on mushroom farming and mushroom cultivation on this channel. I'm doing daily uploads and monthly subscriber giveaways. So if you're into mushrooms and farming, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future but anyway on to today's video bursted grains problems with your grain spawn getting the hydration right we're gonna talk about making perfect grain spawn so first we're gonna talk about types of grains we're gonna talk about preparation we're gonna talk about hydration and then we're gonna talk about temperature and your incubation phase just to make sure you don't have problems throughout your incubation phase now anyway I want to say this is a subscriber suggested video and if any of you subscribers ever have questions or anything like that always feel free to drop it down below in the comment section and I might even make you a video I enjoy making these subscriber videos anyway I had a lot of questions in the last video about cordyceps and stuff like that and there was a, another subscriber that left some really good questions even in the previous video so I've got a really cool Q&A coming up for you guys so drop those questions below it could pertain to anything mushroom farming on this channel I really appreciate all you guys but anyway first just to talk about the types of grain I mainly use millet on my farm okay I like millet let me show you this is one of my bags right here this is the best no prep grain spawn recipe I've talked about this recipe many times on the channel I'm sure some of you are sick about hearing it but for the new subscribers this is a this is my favorite this is my go-to we're gonna talk about this a little bit I'm gonna talk about alternative grains you can also use and just while we're on the topic of grains i'm going to talk about some of the grains i dislike too because there's some grains i feel like are not the best for mushroom cultivation okay so millet as a grain i like using millet because number one i feel like it's extremely easy to prepare you can also source it easily they're also really small they're like little bb's okay so here let's just Take a look at this again and i have vermiculite mixed in here too we'll talk about that it's my favorite way to do it i love putting vermiculite in my spawn but anyway the the millet they're like little bb's okay so that can be many inoculation points when you go to inoculate your bulk substrate so the smaller the grain the more inoculation points you will have when you inoculate your bulk substrate and therefore the mycelium can potentially colonize that bulk substrate faster okay so i'm a big fan of many inoculation points and small grains they also hydrate really easily so the smaller the grain the easier it will be to actually hydrate so that's like another big benefit i feel like to using millet now let's just talk about my recipe here just a second okay so for me to make this bag and this is essentially a five pound bag of grain spawn these are volumetric measurements i use 1500 milliliters of millet 1000 milliliters of vermiculite and then i put 1000 milliliters of water in it okay and then i just kind of mix all that together with my hand fold the bag over and then i pressure cook it for three hours at 15 psi and that is the best no prep grain spawn so perfect cook every single time when you go to inoculate it even when you like when you put the liquid culture in, i showed a really cool video on how to use liquid culture if you guys have not seen my video on how to use liquid culture check that video out okay really good video you learn a lot of cool tips in there but i basically sprayed a bunch of liquid culture in here shook it up this bag is actually inoculated with lc and we did that one six days ago we do not see any growth yet and that is normal that is exactly what you want to see if you see growth that fast with like an oyster mushroom for lc it's probably not mycelium it could potentially be mold okay usually you will see mold show up first actually within a few days usually like three to five days or something you may see mold in your bag if you injected it with bad lc or you just got something moldy going on the mold shows up super fast but it takes about like 10 days or so before you may see anything with an oyster mushroom and then all of a sudden right around that two week mark when you inoculate with lc it's just like boom it's just fully colonized so that's what i do on all my grain spawn i inoculate pretty much all my grain spawn here on my farm with lc and that's pretty much the response i get basically i inject five to ten cc's of lc into one of these best no prep grain spawn bags and they're fully colonized perfectly and ready to use in about two weeks 
But anyway, that's, that's a little bit on Millet. I want to say sorghum or milo is another perfect replacement for millet in that recipe, okay? Okay, so milo or sorghum. This is actually my second favorite grain to use, okay? And I want to say, you can use it, like I said, you can interchange it for millet in that first recipe like I just talked about. And I want to also say, you can also make a blend. You can mix your milo and your millet together. Maybe your milo, for me personally, my milo here is a little bit cheaper than the millet. So if you're trying to save a little bit of money, you might be able to save a little bit of money by cutting your millet a little bit. And uh, I actually think it gives a really nice effect in the grain spawn. So if you guys want to try mixing those two together, it can be kind of beneficial, I feel like. And I will say my my Milo here, so my Milo or my Sorghum that I can get here from the elevator, it's not as clean as the Millet though, okay? So I'll say that is one kind of benefit with the Millet. Now, talking about Milo, Sorghum, and Millet, just all these together, I talked about the grain bag. Let me just talk about the jar. So the jar, in order to make a jar like that, you can take that dry ingredients. Basically, I make a bulk batch of three parts Millet, or milo or sorghum and then two parts vermiculite okay big bulk batch of that and then you basically take a 300 milliliter scoop put that into the jar and then you add 150 milliliters of water to it you make the nifty little jar lid with the polyfill filter okay cover it with aluminum foil and you pressure cook for two to two and a half hours at 15 psi and you can make these bad boys okay so those are my two go-to methods, basically, for the bag and the jar for millet, milo, or sorghum. Now, I want to say, as far as bursted grains, because I did have a subscriber ask him about bursted grains with millet, and I will say, you can experience that sometimes with millet, and if you have that problem, there can be a couple things going on. Number one, it could be an overhydration issue, okay? Number two, if you're not using vermiculite, use the vermiculite in your recipes with millet. I think it makes a huge difference because it is a moisture buffer and it also provides aeration, okay? So there's a couple benefits to using it in the mix, but it definitely reduces the bursted grains. Now let's talk about the jar just a little bit. So with these jars, okay, you can do the no prep recipe actually leaving the vermiculite out and just using 300 milliliters of those grains like I stated before, millet, milo, and, or sorghum okay so you could put 300 milliliters of straight grain in here and then add water and the jars do pretty good okay i feel like the bags don't do as well and you may experience more bursted grains then if you do want to try a recipe without the vermiculite here's my recommendation 2000 milliliters of grain whether that be millet milo or sorghum so 2000 milliliters and then 1000 milliliters of water so that's how you could do it in a bag but like i said in bags, I totally recommend doing the vermiculite in there. That will definitely reduce your bursted grains. In the jar, it doesn't make too much of a difference. But one tip about the jar, okay, there's a technique when you're using jars called the hot shake if you're doing no prep grain spawn. And what the hot shake is, is when you unload your pressure cooker while the jars are still hot. Set them down, have some gloves on or something, or have some towels. Be careful. But you take the jar and you basically just bust it up. You bust, there will be a little hockey puck. The grain typically forms like a little hockey puck on the bottom, okay? And some of those grains can potentially be bursted, but if you take it and you just shake it up a little bit, you bust that hockey puck up, let it sit, let it cool, then it's ready to inoculate, okay? But that can also help reduce problems with bursted grains and stuff like that. Just doing that hot shake, that can help a lot, just kind of disperse stuff. But anyway, those are a few tips for no prep, millet, milo, and sorghum. Okay, so now that brings me to my third favorite grain, basically, and it's gonna be oats, all right? Now we're gonna talk about oats, and my preparation method, my preferred preparation method for oats is a little bit different than millet, milo, and sorghum, okay? So for oats, I do not do a no prep recipe, okay? And I'll say there are some guys that do use no prep variations with oats, and that's cool if you guys wanna use them and stuff. I'll just say I've had inconsistent results with it, and I'll just explain why. I feel like some of the inconsistent results I have had in the past compared to millet, milo, and sorghum is basically just the fact that oats are just like a much bigger grain, and I feel like it is harder and tougher for that grain to hydrate properly with the no prep method, okay? Basically like the no soak, no simmer. So with oats, I actually soak my oats, okay? Now I don't simmer my oats, okay? I will say 
I am a grower that I like never simmer any of my grains, okay? So I, I would just say, if I would ever be in a pinch, okay? Or if I just did not have the option of doing no prep grain spawn, I would use oats and I would just soak them 24 to even up to 36 hours, 24 to 36 hours in that zone. After 36, they start smelling a little funky. So like 24 to 36 hours, that's the perfect zone. Let the oats just sit completely submerged in water, okay? And I'll tell you what I actually like to do when I'm doing like soak preparation, what I'll do is I'll get two five gallon buckets, all right? And I'll have holes drilled in one of them, like a bunch of holes drilled in one of them. And then I'll take that bucket and then I'll put that in another bucket, okay? And no holes in that bucket though, okay? So basically I'm just stacking the two buckets together and the one with the holes goes in on the top. And then what I'll do is I'll fill that bucket up about halfway with grain, all right? Only halfway because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the water to it. And if you add too much grain, it's just gonna overflow at the top once it sucks up all the water. So anyway, about halfway full of grain. And then like I said, completely submerge the grains. And I'll put that water all the way basically up to the top of the bucket. Just make sure those grains are completely submerged. Do your soak, like I said, 24 to 36 hours. Then what you can do is you can take that bucket, that top one, pull it out. And then I actually like to take it, I have a utility sink in the back. I'll just set it up in the utility sink and let it kind of drip dry through there. You could also just like set it on the ground outside or in some rocks or whatever. But uh, basically the whole idea is after you let it soak that 24 to 36 hours, let it just drip dry off like 10 minutes, okay? And then you take the grains, you can load them into jars. If you're doing one quart jars, I make them about three quarters of the way full. And if you're doing bags, like a myco bag, put in about five to six pounds of grain into that bag and then that'll be perfect and you can pressure cook it. The jars, you pressure cook those for two to two and a half hours at 15 PSI. And the bags, the five to six pound bags, I always pressure cook those for three hours at 15 PSI. Okay, but that's my third favorite grain, oats basically, and I like to do a soak method with those. Okay, so those are two ways right there that you can reduce bursted grains and just problems with bursted grains. I feel like choosing a no prep recipe and preparing it properly or just doing a soak preparation and preparing that properly, I feel like both of those really greatly reduces your chance of bursted grains. Now I will say when you can have bursted grains is typically I feel like, I feel like I see it a lot more when people are doing like the simmer technique where they will basically take the grains, put them in water, and I think people simmer the grains for like 30 to 45 minutes in boiling water or just bring the water up to boiling temp and then shut it off. Everybody has their own different technique for that but I feel like personally I well first of all I never simmer anything on the farm I feel like it's like a whole lot of work so I feel like the no prep recipes or the soak versions just reduce work in general because what a lot of people will do they have to like cook the grain perfectly and there is an art to that okay so they're they got to cook the grain perfectly and then they like let it kind of a lot of people will put it on a table to dry out and air out and I'm just like what are all these guys doing creating all this much more work when they could just be doing the best no prep grain spawn recipe or just soaking the grains and like I said straining them and then immediately go to bagging and you don't have to do that big dry out step that everybody does I think that's like crazy dude so anyway that's why I don't simmer my grains I feel like you are more likely to have problems in and it also creates more work now one grain I did not mention but I feel like it's worthwhile mentioning because everybody has so good of success with this all the time is uh, rye I have a lot of subscribers using rye grains and I know a lot of good growers I've met over the years that do use rye grains and they've told me they work in the no prep recipe and the so and the soak versions so if you guys want to try rye in any of those two versions no prep or the soak version you guys can go for it I do not know the perfect no prep recipe for rye grain but I do know there are guys doing that okay so I just wanted to mention that now as far as grains I dislike okay so pretty much my number one grain that I dislike that's like a huge grain in the in the culture I would say is a uh, popcorn I think popcorn is like one of the single worst choices you could use for grain spawn okay I would I think popcorn is much better eaten to tell you the truth and um but anyway for popcorn, I feel like, I think guys do like the soak tech. I feel like it's probably the best way. You may even have to simmer it to get that to like the kernels to suck it up properly, but I never mess with popcorn. You guys will never see me uh, use popcorn on the channel. No drippy corn on this channel. But um, anyway, I feel like the kernels just being so big, it's hard to get the hydration properly. And then also you get less inoculation points. And so I just feel like you can choose something like millet, milo or sorghum oats anything like that they're all gonna 
be better than popcorn pretty much in all of those categories for like inoculation points, ease of use, ease of hydration, and um, everything like that. So, and for me, I even, I think even the millet and the Milo are way cheaper than I could get popcorn anyway. So I have no idea why people would use popcorn, but I do not recommend popcorn, but I, I guess if that's the only thing you have to use, man, use what you got, okay? Um, now, anyway, let's get into talking about incubation and just your best ways to reduce contamination when you're in your incubation phase. Okay, now reducing contamination in your incubation phase. So I wanna say temperature is pretty much the number one killer of your grain spawn or just the number one thing that will cause contamination when your grain spawn is in incubation. So you wanna keep your temperature in check 100% of the time, okay? And a good zone is anywhere from like 60 degrees, okay? All the way up to 72. Anywhere in that zone is good. In the low 60s, it's definitely gonna colonize slower when you get up around 70, that's a real, 70 is a really good temp, okay? 70, 72. Beyond 72 is dangerous, okay? You can be safe at around 75 still, but you are like borderline on the danger zone, ready for catastrophic failure at any time, okay? So always try to really keep your incubation area where your grain spawn is really climate controlled. I have a two ton mini split and I try to keep it in the low 70s here pretty much all the time, okay? So I always make sure my mini split is on, Another thing I want to add to is if you have a window or anything that could directly put sunlight right on your grain spawn, you do not want that, okay? If you have light in the room or just light in the room in general, that is totally okay, but you do not want the sun beaming down on your grain spawn, okay? That can cause all kinds of weird problems, so keep an eye on that. I always like to just make sure my grain spawn is out of the way of any sunlight, and if it is getting light, like I said, artificial light is okay, but you may want to put it even in like a cupboard. I made myself like a really nice grain spawn cabinet before, and I think I might make like a really big kind of grain spawn closet here on the farm. I think that would be pretty cool. So um, you want to keep your grain spawn safe when you are in your incubation phase because any little contaminant that gets in that grain spawn or any, if that grain spawn contaminates at all and you send it to your bulk substrate, then all your bulk substrate is going to contaminate. Okay, so really keep an eye on your grain spawn and take really good care of your grain spawn. But anyway, hopefully you guys found those tips really helpful and informative. I want to say if you have any questions for me or anything I went over in this video, be sure to drop it down below in that comment section. I will answer all your questions and I might even make you a video. But anyway, like I said, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.